So how is everyone today? Good. Good? Okay. I can see that there's not a homework due today. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, the other instructors and I decided that we're going to continue doing Section 5.5 five today. So the schedule is going to slip one position. So let's continue. Okay, so first remark is called the fundamental theorem of algebra. So it's kind of neat, right? That sounds that sounds important, <laughs> right? <laughs> so if you, if you take, end up taking a bunch of math classes, then there's a lot of things that are named in such a way. So here we're about to do, say what the fundamental theorem of algebra is. If you take calculus, there's something called the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, if, you take, if you take a math course called abstract algebra, then there's something called the fundamental theorem of finitely generated al abelian groups. <laughs> there's all kinds of stuff. It sounds horrible. <laughs> well, okay, <laughs> that might that, that might be more or less accurate. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So the fundamental theorem of algebra is this: Let f of x be a polynomial. of degree n. And n, I want it to be greater than 0, so a non-constant a non polynomial. <clears throat> then <clears throat> f of x uh, has <clears throat> at least one complex uh, zero. So by complex, you need to understand that that means that because the reals are a subset of the complex numbers, this could be this could be real so complex doesn't mean doesn't mean that it has a non-zero imaginary part uh, <clears throat> so this is the first statement of the fundamental theorem of algebra where a mathematician this is is concerned this is the fundamental theorem of algebra but then the immediate consequence of this is that <clears throat> f of x can be factored as f of x is a multiplied by x minus c1 multiplied by x minus c2 multiplied by dot 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 x minus c n <clears throat> so what this means is that if I give you a polynomial of degree 5 it will factor into the product of 5 uh, linear terms. If I give you a polynomial of, of degree 12, there'll be 12 factors. If I give you a polynomial of degree 38 million, there'll be 38 million factors. Now, some of the factors might be repeated. Okay, This, this is, and if they are repeated, that, then this 
factorization implies that they repeat it. So for example, it could be x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 1 multiplied by x plus 5. That's totally reasonable. Okay? So this is the, the fundamental theorem of algebra. Every, every uh, math major before they graduate, undergraduate with a math degree has to be able to prove this. So we don't need to prove this in our class. And we're not going to not going to attempt to prove it, but as your friendly neighborhood mathematician, I promise you it, it, it's a fact. Okay? <coughs> uh, good. So the second thing, the second remark, this is called, uh, I don't know even what would be a good name to call this, so I guess I'll call it the complex conjugate. Just a, just a remark about complex conjugates. Conjugate, A-T-E, okay. <clears throat> so, uh, the first remark is that, would you just please remind me, uh, the number two plus five I, the complex number two plus five I, what's its conjugate? Two minus, two minus five I. conjugate 2 minus 5i. How about uh, the number um, 4i has conjugate what? Negative 4i. Okay, how about the number 7? This has conjugate what? Just 7. Right, because because you could, you could understand this to be z 7 plus 0i. So this one would be 7 minus 0i. So reals, numbers that are real in this way can be understood as complex numbers who are their own conjugates. Okay, so then a real number is necessarily self-conjugate. Okay, so that's just to remind you what complex conjugate means. And two, if f of x is a polynomial with real coefficients, then complex zeros must come in conjugate pairs. Okay. So let's use this information now. So there's two pieces of information. A polynomial of degree n must factor into n factors, in degree 1 factors. And a polynomial with real coefficients, when it has, when, when a single complex root shows up, its complex conjugate must also show up. Okay. <clears throat> so find a polynomial of degree four. Let, let's, let's, let's do an easy one first. Of degree 3 with zeros, um, how about 1, uh, 5, and negative 2? Uh, and we'll call this polynomial, say, p of x. So find a polynomial p of x of degree 3 with such and such zeros. And then I also want it to be the case that um, <coughs> p of, say, uh, 3 is equal to 12. OK. So the fact that this polynomial is degree 3 means that it has to have how many factors? has to have three factors. OK? 
Okay, so according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, really the corollary of the fundamental theorem of algebra, says that p of x is equal to a times x minus the first 0 times x minus the second 0 times x minus the third 0. The fundamental theorem of algebra says that it, it is possible to express p in this way. So now my question to you is, <coughs> is how does the information I give you relate to this? Okay, good. So we could take this one and put it there. We could take the five. <coughs> put it there. And we could take the negative two and put it there. Okay, so if we were to do that, then that would say that p of x is a multiplied by x minus 1 times what? x minus 5 times what? x plus 2. <coughs> okay. So if we were to plug in, um, so, so what notably at this position do we not know? A. We don't know A. Okay, these, these three numbers were enough for us to determine the C's, but at, at presently we have not yet determined A. So how do we determine A? Yes, we'll need to use this information. So. <coughs> We know that p of x must look like this. To determine a, we'll use the fact that p of 3 is supposed to be 12. So if we were to, if we were to replace what with 3? So what gets to be 3 now? X. Yeah, x gets to be 3. And if that's the case, then p of x has to be 12. So. <coughs> Just copying this line, p of x is a multiplied by x minus 1, x minus 5, x plus 2. What we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, the x is now going to become uh, 3. And p of x is now going to become 12. So 12 is a multiplied by, OK, so 3 minus 1, 3 minus 5, 3 plus 2. So 12 is a multiplied by, OK, so that's 3 minus 1 is 2, 3 minus 5 is negative 2, and 3 plus 2 is 5. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. So 12 is uh, a multiplied by negative 20. So now what? Very good. So then negative 12 over 20 is a. So I suppose we could cancel the fours. Mm -hmm. So this would be what? Negative 3 fifths is a. And now we have determined all of the unknowns, right? There were, there were four unknowns. A and then three of the c values, and we have them all now. So therefore, p of x is negative 3 fifths times x minus 1 times x minus 5 times x plus 2. Any question about this example? OK. So another one that's really just the same. So we're going to do this one more quickly is suppose that I say I want a polynomial 
with real coefficients. And I want it to have zeros. Uh, negative 3, 2, and i. I want it to be degree 4. And I want it such that, so we'll call this polynomial q of x, say. And I want it to be such that uh, q uh, evaluated at negative 2 is 100. Okay, so there's a unique polynomial that satisfies all these constraints. So I'm looking, if this, is like, this is like the I'm thinking of a number such that, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm thinking of a polynomial such that, okay, I want it to have real coefficients. I want it to have these three zeros. I want it to be degree four. And when you plug in negative two, I want you to, I want you to get 100. So what? Is the fourth zero negative one? Well, let's think about it for a minute. So I gave you three zeros. Mm -hmm. Yes, I gave you three zeros, but I want it to be degree four. So how many zeros must there be? There must be a fourth zero, but I only gave you three. So I told you there were three zeros, but I also said that the polynomial I'm thinking of has real coefficients, which means that any complex zeros must come with their conjugate pair. So i is a complex zero. And what's the complex conjugate of i? Negative i. So, so I sort of underhandedly, I, get, I explicitly gave you three zeros, but implicitly I, I gave you four. So does everybody see how I kind of snuck that fourth one in there? Okay. Okay. So because of the fundamental theorem of algebra, we know that Q of X must factor as A multiplied by X minus a zero, X minus a second zero, X minus a third zero, and X minus a fourth zero. So the fundamental theorem of algebra says that it's possible to represent this, po the polynomial in question in this way. Right. So this, this three, I can say it goes here. This two, here. This i, here. And now we said it out loud, but I want, also want you to see that we sort of ran out, sort of ran out of, of zeros. But the fact that we have real coefficients and the fact that we have this complex zero together combine to say that negative i is also a zero because that's the co complex conjugate of i, and now that one can be put here. So any question about that? So let's do that. <clears throat> so, uh, so just as an aside, if I was to tell you that I'm you know, if we're playing this game, I'm thinking of a polynomial with real coefficients. And if I tell you that, say, 3 minus 7i is a 0, then what else must be a 0? Yeah, that implies that 3 plus 7i is a 0. Because 3 plus 7i is the complex conjugate of 3 minus 7i. So they must come in pairs. Okay. So I gave, you, I gave you that this was one of the zeros. Mm -hmm. You could think of this 
as 0 plus 1i. Okay. What's the complex conjugate of 0 plus 1i? 0 minus 1i, so negative i. So whenever there is an i, you just assume that the other one comes with it? No, it, it has to have, so in this, in this class, effectively, yes. If you, if, you see, if you see one of those zeros has an i in it, then the conjugate must also show up. Mm -hmm. But that's because in this class we only consider polynomials with real coefficients. In other classes, if you were to, say, start taking more advanced math classes or start mm -hmm. taking physics, then you'll start dealing with polynomials that have complex coefficients. Okay. So, so con con continuing from that aside now, so this would be x plus 3 is a factor, um, x minus 2 is a factor, x minus i is a factor, and x plus i is a factor. So notably now, what have we not determined? We have not determined A. So now how do we determine A? Very good. So for A, we will use this last piece, this last unused piece of information, that Q of negative 2 is known to be 100. Right. So 100 is A multiplied by, so when we plug in negative 2, when we plug in negative 2, we get um, 1 for that one, four, uh, negative 4 for that one. We get negative 2 minus I for that one, and we get negative 2 plus I for that one. And we know that's supposed to be 100. Okay. So 100 is A, and then... Um, okay, so 1 times negative 4 is negative 4, that's great. But what is negative 2 minus i times negative 2 plus i? Negative 4 minus i squared. Yeah, think about it. <laughs> no. I squared is negative 1, and because these are conjugates, means that there will be no more i's when you multiply this out. It is 4 minus i squared, yes. So what is 4 minus i squared? Okay, which is 5. Okay, so this would be 1, this would be negative 4, and then this would be 5. The reason, the reason is, is because if you foil this out, you'd get negative 2 squared, so first, and then outside, so that'd be negative 2i, and then insides plus 2i, and then outsides minus i squared. So the, the, the o and the i, the middle terms, they cancel, and we'd get 4 uh, minus negative 1, which is 5. Okay, so then 100, is A multiplied by negative 20? Didn't we have negative 20 on the last one? Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. That's just a coincidence. It's, it's not always going to be negative 20. Okay, so then if we divide both sides by negative 20, uh, what? Maybe negative 5 mm -hmm. is A. <clears throat> and so then now we can make our answer. So polynomial was um, negative 5 multiplied by x plus 3 times x minus 2 times x minus i times x plus i. Terrific. Any question about this one? Okay. So now let's do what? <laughs> oh, that looks terrific. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. 
completely factor f of x is 10, uh, x to 4, minus 21, x to 2, uh, plus 11. And we want to do this in C. So now this is kind of the opposite problem of what we were just dealing with. The opposite problem, the problem we were just dealing with, with is I told you all the zeros. And I said, come up with the polynomial. Effectively, we're doing a, the reverse of this. Is I've given you the polynomial, and I want you to provide for me all the zeros, more or less. So there's a really easy way to do this, and there's a long way to do this. <laughs> Let's do it the long way. <clears throat> the scenic route. The scenic route. Yeah, that's better. I like that. Got to frame it right. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, this is a quartic, a polynomial of degree four. So we don't have any general methods to deal with a polynomial of degree 4, uh, like we do for a polynomial of degree 2. So what we need is we need to find a 0. So how are we going to do it? Rational zeros. Rational zeros there. So we need a 0. So we use the rational zeros theorem to come up with a list of candidates. Candidates. Okay, so that's plus or minus what? So what goes in the numerator? Ten. Not 10. Eleven. eleven. A factor of 11, right? A factor of 11 divided by a factor of 10. So it's always going to be a constant term divided by the, lead, the leading coefficient. So it's always like this. So, you know, this is something that you simply must remember. So I'll tell you the way that I remember it. So, uh, so the reason is because is that when, when, it, when is this really nice? when it's monic, right? If the polynomial in question is monic, what is, by the way, what does monic mean? The leading coefficient is one. The reason why monic polynomials are so nice is because that would mean that the denominator could only be one. It couldn't be anything else. That's, that's why they're nice, is that monic polynomials, if they, have, if they have rational zeros, all of them are integers. This polynomial, if it has rational zeros, some of them might not be integers. Okay. So which is to say that it's the leading coefficient that goes in the denominator, and it's particularly nice when that is 1. Okay. So plus or minus, what are the um, factors of 11? 1 and 11. 1 and 11. And what are the factors of 10? 2. 1 and 2. Okay, so 1... 2 and 10. Oh, did I leave one off? I think you did. Oh, okay. So then, so just as a reminder, this one is kind of easy to do, but if it's ever more complicated, remember the check that you can do is you check and make sure that every number is paired up. So 1, I need, we need numbers to pair up to multiply to 10. So 1 pairs with 10, and who does 2 pair with? Five, right? Oh, okay, so five is missing. Okay. So that means that there's a lot of possibilities. Okay. So then uh, we could take the denominator to be one. So in such a case, we would have one and 11. We could take the denominator to be two, in which case we the possibilities would be half and 11 halves. We could take the denominator to be 5, so that in such a case there would be a fifth 
and 11 fifths. And then we could take the denominator to be 10, so a tenth and 11 tenths. So yes, how many possibilities are there? 16. 16. That sounds terrific. Okay. So, what do you want to do? <laughs> did you do? Did you find one already? So, uh, just, just guessing. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so I'm, I'll do what y'all suggest. I don't know what the answer is because right? I just pulled this one out of the book. But there's 16 possibilities, and you got to you've got to be prepared that you're probably not going to guess right the first time. Okay. So it's a good idea to to check the integer ones first because the arithmetic is easier. And it's, there's nothing, as far as, as far as like math is concerned, there's no particular reason why there should be an integer zero. Okay, as far as like math is concerned. But you've got to understand that there's humans involved. An instructor is writing your exercise. And the, that, you know, that's me. And I'm coming up with constraints about, okay, in the first place, I want the, the arithmetic in the exercise to not be too complicated. And I want it, the question to, to be somewhat gradable, right? Because if you, if, you, <laughs> if you write a solution, even if it's completely correct and it's an arithmetic explosion, then the grader you know, can potentially lose their sanity over the course of eight hours of grading. <laughs> so let's try one. So what coefficients go in the top row? Very good. So got those zeros hanging out. Okay, so then carry down the 10 and then multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, oh look, add, multiply, <coughs> uh, whoops, add, we got so lucky, right? So happy about that. So that that's good. So why why do I what do I mean we got so lucky? Right. So that that's the first thing that we remarked to ourselves. We said we need a zero. We we got one. Okay, great. Uh, so that tells us that what's one of the factors? x minus 1 is a factor. But even better, we know the other factor. What's, what is it? 10x cubed plus 2x squared. Very good. 10x cubed plus 10x squared minus 11x minus 11. OK. The x minus 1 comes from, so do you agree that we plugged in 1 and that we got 0? Mm -hmm. Well, the fact that you plugged in 1 and got a 0 means that x minus 1 must be a factor. So if we plugged in 7 and got, a zero, and got 0, then what would be a factor? Mm -hmm. x minus 7. If we plugged in negative 8 and got a 0, what would be a factor? x plus 8 would be a factor. It, we just guessed. Oh, okay. Here's 16 possibilities, okay. and we just guessed. And I didn't know one was going to be a zero. That's just lucky. But it's a good idea to choose one <laughs> first, right? Don't choose don't choose 11 tenths first, okay? In principle, there's nothing wrong with choosing 11 tenths, but one is easier to deal with. <laughs> okay. Okay. So then the other the other factor came from coefficients of the quotient. Okay. So any questions getting to this position? So have we answered the exercise? No. no. So what, what part of the language means that we haven't answered? Completely. Completely. OK. So now we need to factor this. But it's a cubic, so it's in, 
in that way, it's sort of we're in a better position than we, w than we were. Where did we start? With a quartic, right? We started with degree four. We went through one, one round, and we were able to break it into something that has size one and something that has size three. So we've decreased the size. That's good. OK. <clears throat> so uh, what do we need to do then? Well, what we need to do is we, so we need a zero. So what are we going to do? We're going to use the rational zeros theorem. And we're going to say that it's got to be plus or minus a factor of 11 over a factor of 10. So now, it, it, it is the same as before, but that's only a coincidence. It's only a coincidence. And the reason why it's the same as before is because we found 1 to be a 0. That means that, that, means that the first and last coefficient don't change. So if we had found something else to be a zero, for example, if we had found uh, 11 to be a zero, then the factors would have changed, then the first and last coefficient would have changed, and this would be substantially different, and there'd be a lot less possibilities. OK. OK, so the possibilities are still plus or minus 1, 11, half. 11 halves, a fifth, 11 fifths, a tenth, and 11 tenths. What do you want to try? Negative one. Negative one? <laughs> so as I'm sitting up here talking, I, get, I think y'all are working ahead. That's fine. <laughs> That's good. Uh, OK. so. So I'm going to put these numbers here. So I need to put 10, and then 0, and then negative 21, and then 0, and then 11, right? Bam. <laughs> bam, bam. <laughs> no, look, I copied them right. So what's not right about this? That's the wrong. It's the old. Right. What are we trying to factor? We're trying to factor this cubic. Right. If, if we were to do this, that would be like we forgot that we did the first stuff. Okay? So the real numbers that need to go on the top row are 10, 10, negative 11, negative 11. Okay? So now I'll try negative 1. So carry down the 10 and then multiply. Add, multiply, add, multiply, add. OK, so that's great, but I do want to point out that it, you usually don't get so lucky. OK? <laughs> as, as to guess correctly twice in a row. OK, so that tells us a partial factorization. So we know f of x. <coughs> is equal to. So the fact that negative 1 is a 0 means that what is a factor? x plus 1. Right. And x minus 1. <laughs> Good. So because this is a 0, this quotient tells us another factor. So what's the quotient factor? Very good. 10x squared and then minus 11. OK, so now, is this? So what, what mistake have I made? Right, I've forgotten about the x minus 1. And I just point this out be, because I'm just letting you know that this is not the first time I've taught college algebra. And leaving, leaving this factor off is, a, is a, sort of just forgetting about it is a common class of error that students make on these exercises. Okay, so now have we answered the question? No, the glorious work is not yet completed. <laughs> right. So what I'd like to point out, though, is, is, okay, this was a polynomial of degree 4, and then we did our work, and then now we have a polynomial of degree 3. And then we did our work, and we now, now we have a polynomial of degree 2. And so you know, you know those Russian dolls where you open one up, 
and then inside is a smaller one. And maybe you had that experience as a child where you see one of those the first time and then you open it and then there's another one and then you realize, oh, there could be more. And then you open, 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 open until you get to the end. <laughs> you say, oh, I made it <laughs> to the end. That's exactly what's happening here. So whenever I do a question like this, you know, I think about, I opened up the polynomial of degree four and in it I found a polynomial of degree three. And then I open up the polynomial of degree three and inside I find a polynomial of degree two. Terrific. <laughs> yes? I don't understand your question. Like, we knew that because we have like negative one as a factor, positive one. Well, no. So, okay. Okay. So, you need to be careful here. Mm -hmm. uh, negative one, one is a zero, and negative one is a zero, but that's a coincidence. These are not complex conjugates of each other. What what is the complex conjugate of one? No, the, so let me say it like this. So this one, this, so this is an aside now. One is equal to one plus zero i. What is the conjugate of one plus zero i? One minus zero i, but that's one. So the complex conjugate of one is one not negative one, okay? So the, so the fact that, that one is a zero implies that one is a zero. <laughs> if, this, if this was, say, one plus four i, then that would indicate that one minus four i is also a zero. Other questions? Okay, so now we want to do this. So now we're trying to factor this part. But it's a quadratic, which, and we have lots of um, techniques to deal with quadratics. Okay, so what do you want to do? So we could do the product sum thing. We could use the quadratic formula. You want to use the quadratic formula? Okay. <coughs> um, okay. So we're going to do this. We're going to factor um, 10x squared minus 11 using the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula, what does it tell us? It doesn't tell us the factors. What does it tell us? The zeros. But remember that zeros and factors are in one-to-one -one correspondence. So the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So, yeah, it, it was going, the song was in my head. I was, I was purposefully not singing it. It was, it, was, it was a little bit of work, too, actually, to not do it. Okay, so then in this particular quadratic, what are a, b, and c? 10, 0, and negative 11. So that would be negative 0 plus or minus the square root of 0 squared minus 4 times 10 times negative 11 over 2 times 10. So that's just plugging stuff in. So forgetting the 0, so plus or minus the square root of, well, Okay, good. 440 over uh, 2 times 10. Now, but I want to simplify this a little bit, so can it be simplified? A little bit, right? So then um, the 4, right, a 4 can come out, and then we'd have 110 in the radical. So that would be <coughs> plus or minus uh, 2 because that's how 4 comes out, 110 over, over 20, or 2 times 10, anyway. And then so that would be uh, what? The 2's cancel, plus or minus <coughs> the square root of 110 uh, over 10. So those are the zeros. 
So th what are the two different zeros? No, not the f not not that. What are the two different zeros? The zeros. Very good. So So that's a zero and that's a zero. So we found two zeros. Okay. So as a result, what we know is we know from the fundamental theorem of algebra in the first place <coughs> uh, that um, because this is a polynomial of degree two, how does it factor? How many, how, how many factors will it have? It'll have two. So one of them will look like x minus c1 and the other like x minus c2, but there's something that I'm missing from the fundamental theorem. A. The a, right? Mm -hmm. So what gets routed where? So this one can go, can go there. This one can go there. And then what about the a? It's 10, right? It's got to be this. Does everyone see where the parts come from? Okay. So that's telling you that 10x squared minus 11 is 10 multiplied by x plus square root of 110 over 10 multiplied by x minus square root of 110 over 10. And so what's the answer to the question then? <laughs> so is this the answer to the question? Yeah. It's not finished yet, right? What we did is we started with a quartic and using the rational zeros theorem and Horner scheme, we, we, pu we pulled out two linear terms, two linear factors. Then we switched to the quadratic formula and factored the remaining quadratic. So the answer is all that work that we did before. So f of x is this, this bit right there. x minus 1 times x plus 1 times 10 times x plus square root of 110 over 10 times x minus square root of 110 over 10. And so we started with a polynomial of degree 4. Does this make sense that we would end right here? Yeah, right? So then, sorry? No problem. Well, what were you saying? Yeah, because there's four of them, right? So I've asked, you to, I've asked you to factor a polynomial of degree four. If you gave me an answer that looks like this, that would indicate to me, f first off, that you didn't account for something, so you lost track of something. However, furthermore, it would indicate to me that you don't understand that a polynomial of degree four necessarily has four factors. So if you give to me, if I say factor this thing of degree five, you had better give me something that has five factors. Otherwise, that il indicates to me that you do not know what the fundamental theorem of algebra is. Okay. Good. Any questions about this? Have a nice weekend.